welcome back to Sunday's Communication, everyone. Well, I've been privileged to hear about about my colleague while growing up, but today we're going to look into his story, how he lived his life, and I bet you're going to enjoy it. So stay tuned, guys. His names are Olayinka Herbert Samuel Hilas Badmos Macaulay, and he was a Nigerian nationalist, politician, surveyor, engineer, architect, journalist, and musician, and is considered by many Nigerians as a father of Nigerian nationalism. Herbert Macaulay, as Nigerians refer to him, was born in Broad Street, Lagos, on 14th of November 1864, to the family of Thomas Babington Macaulay and Abigail Prather. His parents were children of people captured from Nigeria, resettled in Syria alone by the British West African Squadron, and eventually returned to Nigeria. Thomas Babington Macaulay was one of the sons of Ojo Ori Are, while Abigail Crother was the daughter of Bishop Samuel Ajayi Crother, a descendant of King Abiodun. Thomas Babington Macaulay was the founder of the first secondary school in Nigeria, the CMS Grammar School, Lagos State. Macaulay entered primary school in 1869 and from 1869 to 1877, he was educated at St. Paul's Breadfruit School, Lagos and CMS Faji School, Lagos. From 1877 to October 1880, he attended CMS Grammar School, Lagos for his secondary school education. He was a student at the school when his father died at 1878. He joined his maternal uncle's trade steamer and embarked on a trade and missionary journey across the Niger River, visiting Boni, Lokoja, Bebe, and Brass. After going to a Christian missionary school, he took a job as a clerical assistant and in textile at the Department of Public Works, Lagos. Thereafter, with the support of the colonial administration, Macaulay left Lagos on the 1st of July 1890 to further his training in England. From 1891 to 1894, he studied civil engineering in Flymouth, England, and was also a pupil of J.D. Bellamy, a borough surveyor and water engineer in Flymouth. In 1893, he became a graduate of Royal Institute of British Architects, London. Macaulay was also an accomplished musician who received a certificate in music from Trinity College London and a certificate in violin playing from Music International College London. By the end of the 18th, he had begun to divert from his professional and social activities to become a political activist. He joined the anti-slavery and abolitionist protection society. Macaulay was an unlikely champion of masses a grandson of Ajayi Krotha, the first African bishop of the Niger territory. He was born into a Lagos that was divided politically into groups arranged in a convenient pecking order. The British authorities who lived in the posh Marina district, the Saras and other slave descendants who lived to the west, and the Brazilians who lived behind the whites in the Portuguese town. Behind all three lived the real Lagosians, the masses of indigenous Yoruba people disliked and generally ignored by their privileged neighbors. It was not until Macaulay's generation that the Saros and the Brazilians even began to contemplate making common cause with the masses. Macaulay was one of the first Nigerian nationalists and for most of his life as strong opponent of many colonial policies. As a reaction to claims by the British that they were governing with the true interest of the natives at heart, he wrote, The dimensions of the true interest of the natives at heart are algebraically equal to the length, breadth, and depth of the white man's pocket. Funny, right? In 1908, he exposed European corruption in the handling of railway finances, and in 1919, he argued successfully for the chiefs whose land had been taken by the colonial government in front of the Privy Council in London. As a result, the colonial government was forced to pay compensation to the chiefs. Though from a family of devout Anglicans, Macaulay embraced indigenous African religious traditions. He was superstitious and dabbled in the practice of magic. His personal papers contain notes from fortune tellers and diviners with instructions around taboos, divinations, sacrifices and other occult practices. Macaulay was also a member of the Association of Babalawos, that is, the Ifa priest of Lagos. 
Macaulay was a great socialite in Victorian Lagos. He organized concerts and film shows. He was among the first Nigerians that brought films to Nigeria by inviting film companies to come to Lagos to exhibit films at his residence named Kirsten Hall after his German consul friend Otto Kirsten on number 8 Babina Yaba Street. Macaulay was nicknamed Wizard of Kirsten Hall because of his ability to obtain classified information. Macaulay ran a network of informants whom he paid ransomly. Many times, minutes from colonial government meetings would be leaked in newspapers that Macaulay was associated with. Whole sections of colonial government files and telegrams can be found in the Macaulay papers at the Africana section of the library at the University of Ibadan. He supported opposition to British rule in colonial Nigerian House of Dosimo in its opposition to the water rates and colonial acquisition of Lagos lands. He also galvanized the Ilu Committee composed of the Oba of Lagos and traditional chiefs in Lagos to oppose some of the colonial policies. Herbert Macaulay co-founded the Nigerian Daily News, a platform he used to write opinion pieces such as Justia Fiat, the moral obligation of the British government to the House of Dosimo. He also wrote a piece titled Henry Carr Must Go. From 1923 to 1938, he became a prominent figure in Lagos in many political issues concerning Lagos, of course, including elections into the quinquennial elections into the Legislative Council, perennial elections to the Lagos Town Council, and the headship of the House of Dosimo. In his political activities, he relied on Lagos Daily News, the Lagos Market Women Association led by his ally, Ali Motu Belewura, the House of Dosimo, and many uneducated Lagosians. On the 24th of June 1923, he founded the Nigerian National Democratic Party, NNDP, the first Nigerian political party. The party won all the seats in the elections of 1923, 1928, and 1933. Though the party's major function was to put candidates into the Legislative Council, it had a broader objective of promoting democracy in Nigeria, increasing higher Nigerian participation in the social, economic, and educational development of Nigeria. So is it that Harry Macaulay never faced any obstacle on the way while he was doing all these marvelous things? Of course! he did let's hear it so Macaulay was barred from running for public office because of legal problems he was convicted twice by the colonial government in Lagos the first time for fraud and the second for sediction in 1944 Macaulay co-founded the National Council of Nigeria and Cameroons the NCNC together with Namdi Adekwe and became its president the NCNC was a patriotic organization designed to bring together Nigerians of all stripes to demand independence. In 1946, Macaulay fell ill in Kano and later died in Lagos. Macaulay's reported last words were, Tell the National Council delegates to halt wherever they are for four days for Macaulay and then carry on. Tell the Oged to keep the flag flying. The leadership of the NCNC went to Azikwe, who later became the first president of Nigeria. Macaulay was buried at Ikoi Cemetery in Lagos on 11th of May 1946. Namdi Azikwe delivered a funeral oration at Macaulay's burial ceremony and Isaac Babalola Thomas, editor and proprietor of the Akede Eko, was executor of Macaulay's last will and testament. Like his political foe, Henry Rawlinson Carr, whose library and papers are at the University of Ibadan Library, Macaulay's private collection called the Macaulay's Papers are at the African section of the University of Ibadan Library. The Macaulay Papers include a vast assortment of political pamphlets, newspapers, government documents. They also include personal papers, correspondences, diaries, and photographs. Macaulay was featured in the One Naira banknote since 
1979 until 1991 when the note was replaced by a coin also portraying Macaulay. A biopic titled The Herbert Macaulay Affair, which covered about three decades of his life, was made by Nigerian filmmaker Imo Umoren and released in 2019, all in honor of Herbert Macaulay. And I hope you liked that. Of course you did. It was nice and lovely, right? You guys learned a lot from that. So stay tuned for more episodes from Sunday's Communication. And don't forget that my name is Adenaike. Janet, see you guys next time.